so it snowed last night and it's kind of put a damper on some things as far as getting our concrete done this week. It's a little bit of a disappointment since it's the third week in a row that we've had to reschedule our concrete. <laughs> We're trying to get the floor done in our basement level. So it's kind of a bummer. It's not going to happen this week because I'll show you the forecast. It's snow all week long. Somebody's excited about the snow though. He loves it. I'll never be able to get this driveway shoveled with him because he's going to try to eat the shovel the whole time. Not that I'm not used to cold weather. I grew up in Vermont, and in fact, when we went out there to visit my family, at Christmas time, it was below zero for an entire week. In fact, it was about between 10 below and 20 below for six or seven days straight. So that's cold weather, and <laughs> that's why we moved to Colorado instead of Vermont, because it's not usually that cold here. Zero degrees is definitely the coldest weather we've had. I think we had one day so far this year where it was zero degrees when I woke up in the morning, but generally it's much warmer than that. Anyway, all this cold weather has got me thinking about spring. So what I'm going to talk about today in plan and show you guys what I'm planning is my, is our garden and our landscaping and the permaculture that we're trying to try to put into place. So anyway, time to shovel. So we will be getting a plow eventually. Right now, Brian's been using the box scraper on the tractor to get the driveway done. Fortunately, the tractor's up at the property and not here at the house that we're staying at, so I still got a shovel by hand. But one cool thing about Colorado is that the snow is really fluffy. Like if I had a blower, I could probably blow the whole driveway clean, so. You don't have to really pick it up, you could just mo mostly push it out of the way. All right, folks, I'm trying to warm up now for my morning chores with a cup of tea and sitting by the wood stove in the kitchen. But I wanted to show you what I'm thinking about as far as planting gardens and landscaping for our property this spring. So, so on a cold day like today, I think just doing some planning for the spring is going to make me feel better about it. So one thing I've done is taken some books from the library. I've got one that's specific to our area called Growing Foods in the Southwest Mountains. So this is going to have a lot more specific um, to the area, growing tips. This one's called Practical Permaculture. It's just about the whole process of applying and planning uh, design for your landscape based on the attributes that it has. One thing that's helpful is to get a little property diagram and then, you know, I use some colored pencils to kind of sketch some things out, but this can kind of help you plan space and just get an overall sense of what what your property looks like this i also made a went ahead and made a list of the unique attributes that our property has so in the, some of the interventions that we've already done including the beehive installation and a couple of sum, summers ago when we were camping out here before we built anything i planted some wildflowers i also and i'll show you some pictures so of i was surprised and delighted about the wildflowers that we planted the they came up so beautifully and there were bees were all over them. So there definitely were native species to the area, hardy for this climate, and probably going to plant some more this spring. But let me take you to a close-up of our diagram of the property next. Here is where the driveway starts, and there's a sharp curve in the corner. I've got my car stuck there on one of my videos. And this is where I planted a bunch of wildflowers last summer. There's a nice bank right here, and they looked really beautiful coming up. And then we start to go uphill. See all the lines up here? Look at 9,200 feet. That's legit. We are up high. Uh, more wildflowers I planted on the side of the driveway up here. And then we come around the second curve. And this is where we actually have a natural spring. I've kind of put some blue water here. So this is kind of like a ditch on the side of the driveway. It's always full. And it just seems to be seeping out of the 
uh, side of the hill. In the spring, it's just constant water flow. Dog likes to go in there and jump around and swim and get filthy. So uh, there's a lot of aspen trees. That's the screen here. And the driveway comes up. And then here is the house situated up here. And then this is sort of a little cul-de-sac area. We've got our little barn up here. Uh, the S stands for septic. That's kind of where the septic's at. And this is, we still have another acre past this dotted line, but it's all wooded, so we're not really trying to plan with it. There's like an aspen grove right here, and I put some doodles about some, some of the plans. So, I can zoom in. This is what I'm thinking. This is one of the things I would like to do first, is a terraced garden. So I put like a little boxes here and like maybe some steps. Um, so on each side, it's having some kind of terraced garden. And maybe these are stone pathways that can go walk where you can walk around them and then have some kind of staircase. But I think that would be great. And I think these would be really good suited to growing greens or garlic or perennial flowers that are really hardy that they don't need greenhouse protection. So this is where I'm going to use my uh, Southwest Mountains book to kind of determine what's the best things to plant. But that I think that would add a lot to the landscape of, and the beauty of the house and the homestead is to have some kind of terraced garden system. So kind of coming down this way. And then with my stone pathway, I would like to connect that to uh, this B stands for beehive. So it's not, the beehive is actually not too far from the home, from the house. And so I think a nice little stone pathway would be really pretty there. I want to add a few more hives this spring. I ordered one package already and I'm, I'm talking to another lady that lives up here that might be selling some of hers as splits. So I would like to do that. Uh, these are bushes that I put up. I would like to add some wind breaks because the wind blows across and it's very harsh, I think, an environment for the bees. So putting up some Creeping Mahonia, I've heard from uh, from the extension office up here is a really good windbreak and they're also early pollinator for bees. Part of permaculture planning is to think about how systems can benefit each other. So by planning a windbreak, I'm gonna be helping the bees, but I'm also planning a windbreak that's gonna su supply food for them. So an early pollinating plant for the bees is, uh, is a, a, I think, an intelligent move. This is where we have a cistern right now. It's an old well that we're not allowed to use. We're not allowed to use it for our current well. Plus, my gosh, it's so far down. To be able to pump it up to the house doesn't make a lot of sense. But boy, is that perfect for irrigating any kind of garden. So one thing we're thinking about doing, again, to support the bees, is to plant a field of red clover right here. I would also like to plant some blueberry bushes some blackberry bushes or raspberry bushes. Um, this is, and I also like to plant a bed of asparagus. And this is sort of a hashed out because anything that we plant, we're gonna have to protect from the moose. So like the beehive, we have a solar fence and we have cattle fencing electrified. So it's pretty tall. And I think we might do something like that around blueberry bushes, asparagus, anything that we're trying to grow away from the house. Eventually I'd like to have a greenhouse and that this might be a good area for the greenhouse. This S stands for solar. This is where a solar panel array. So that's actually going to be in this area. So then maybe there's, you know, a way that we could incorporate the greenhouse to the solar. Um, I'd also like to have some mushroom logs, maybe shiitakes or something like that. So maybe an, in the shade of the aspen trees. Interesting enough, I found last, the end of last summer, some King Balik mushrooms up right in these aspens here. That's a native species to the area. King Balik is a word, another word for that. It's the porcini mushroom. So that actually grows wild in uh, in Colorado and native species to this area. So I know mushrooms can grow and it would be just fun to try uh, to do shiitakes. Of course, we'd have to integrate with the irrigation system to keep those logs moist in the dry in the dry area. So that's some of what we're planning right now. I because th we're I think we're in zone four or five right now. That is a short season. And my first goals is to expand the apiary, so more beehives, the terraced gardens, the greenhouse that might not get done first because of resources. 
um, diverting our water, collecting the spring water, and then draining it using for irrigation soil. Maybe maybe a duck pond in our future, I'm not sure. But working on uh, water, establishing perennials, shrubs, trees, windbreaks, things that are bee friendly, that'll be pollinators, asparagus, I'd like to get asparagus bed because I know it takes a while to establish, mushroom logs, and eventual goal would be to grow 70% of our most commonly eaten foods. So th those are the ideas we've got so far. I think that's a lot to throw out there in our first year, but I think they're definitely doable. They, you know, the terraced gardens, especially the berry bushes. I'm not sure at our elevation that we'd be able to do fruit trees. So I definitely welcome your ideas as far as what you think we could grow in a zone four or five area. Um, I think the greenhouse is going to be one of the advantages definitely down the road. The main goals would be um, expanding the apiary. I'm already doing that. I've got my bees on order. I'm going to put up a windbreak for the bees, establish some early pollinating plants, trees, and shrubs, do more with wildflowers, do more with native species, um, perennials, greens, uh, vegetables that are suited to cold climates. I can plant those in the terraced garden beds and maybe planting that red clover, that'd be a simple task, not too expensive. With the sun exposure, it's going to be it's going to be an experiment and we'll let you know the things we still need to figure out is when's the first frost and when's the last frost and definitely going to consult my Growing Food in the Southwest Mountains book, make a list of some vegetables to buy, maybe some seeds to buy. Nothing's going to go into the ground until May probably at this point. Uh I'm not a gardening expert, I, I'm not a landscaping expert, I'm not a permaculture expert, but I'm just trying to throw some of these principles in to have the best success that we can with what we're doing and to make things kind of a little bit more harmonious and integrative as far as our planning and not trying to do stuff that's going to consume too many resources. Although we do have some magnificent resources at our disposal. We have excellent solar and we, have, we also have uh, natural water source at our disposal. So we're pretty lucky in those respects. You know, I'd love to hear your comments. If there's anything else that you can think of, any recommendations that you have as far as what you think our first step should be. Um, again, it's going to come down to resources and time. We're in a battle of trying to get our house ready and move in. So some of us might have to take the back burner and, um, you know, that would be unfortunate because you want to get a head start. But that's why I'm thinking the bushes first and the pollinating plants first. So hopefully this is a little bit, give you a little bit of um, insight to what we're facing and uh, look forward to keeping you updated with our plans to um, keep, continue to develop our land in a natural but beautiful way. And, you know, it's very exciting. And even though it's February and it's snowy and zero degrees outside, this is the kind of stuff that keeps me going and uh, keeps me excited for what's to come. So if, you, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to keep following our journey and you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. And if you know other folks that are interested in this lifestyle, maybe mountain living and they're thinking about how to get started, send them, send them our link and uh, get them connected to the channel and we'll do the best we can to keep you all updated. Take care.